Hi friends of golfers, Eric Silver, EJS Golf, EJSGolf.com. I do a little series here on what are my fundamentals and some are going to be shocked. Um, some are going to want to argue with me because it's not the old fundamentals of the old days of alignment, you know, your setup, your grip. And I, I do want to address all those of why, okay, of why I don't believe some of those are strict fundamentals. And and here, in a real brief answer to that question is, watch a PGA tournament, okay? And watch how, let's just talk first off about grip. Let's talk about people with strong grips, okay? Because everybody assumes that, oh, you, um, Miss, Mr. Uh, Jones or Mrs. Smith, you fade the ball. Let's get you a really strong grip so you draw it. Okay. But, let me ask this question. How come the strongest got grips on the tour fade the ball? Look at the super strong grips on there. Let's talk about Paul Azinger. You're talking four knuckles, a fader of the golf ball. So how is that a fundamental then of a sport if it doesn't ring true? Okay. So that's, you know, one example. The others are, you can look at somebody like, you know, Lee Trevino, opening up his body. You can look at some of these things that our guys in the way he came in, he would actually play a draw up from there. Didn't mean a cut. He could draw it. Okay. So there's so many things we can do with this club face. Once we've understood this club face, our pivot path, low point control, when we understand those four, I just told you mine, then we've nailed it. We understand this full picture. Okay. So the focus I'm just going to have this be the intro on and what is so different about it today? Why is grip not have to be a fundamental of where the strong grip and the other thing when I grew up, it was this, I'm, you know, I'll tell you what I am. I'm 50. And the reason I say that is, is, you know, not to say I'm old or young or whatever it is. It's not that it's to kind of put you in an understanding of when I grew up and what I learned. Trackman wasn't around yet. We didn't have some of the answers that we have now. Um, I was growing up and even when I taught, sorry folks, but here's the thing is, you know, a lot of us teachers knew, knew it was wrong. We weren't teaching that way. We were taught path was your club path, how it traveled was where the ball started. That's what PJ said. And even when Trackman, Trackman proved it true, it was still on the PJ exams. So somebody who knew it had to lie or, you know, put the wrong answer down in order for it to be correct. Okay. So grip. You, you drop, you fade the ball. So you're gonna get this super strong grip. All these knuckles are gonna show. And like a starting off thing, the other thing you hear then is, okay, so I better match that. This V is going to the right, then this hand's gotta go to the right underneath. Okay, so therefore I have my grip now to fix that fade. Um, why does it not always work then? It doesn't always because it's not, does it help? Believe me, yes, okay? If you're a person who puts your <laughs> grip in here, you don't even get the top of your, uh, um, meaty part of your hand on top, you're just all along this crease here, well, you can't even hinge your club, if you look at that. Versus if you're here, you get a nice bit of grip, it hinges. So believe me, I put a lot of people in a grip. I And I'm a believer, I think a stronger grip, the less strength you have is really good for you. And in general, I think a strong grip is good for most golfers, most golfers. Okay. Not every single one of them. Um, I, I believe the wrists hinge easier, um, with a real strong grip, but it's so funny is everybody that comes to me has these really weak grips with their hands on the side. Okay. So probably getting off a little off track of the fundamentals, but so, you know, it, it just goes to show that. I don't have to have it. Like I said, just watch a tour event and watch the ball flight that people play and try to determine by their grip if that is the determinant to ball flight. And you'll start to go really quick, no, it's not a determinant to ball flight. What is a determinant to ball flight? What's the simple answer? So the ball is gonna start where this club face is pointed about 85 percent approximately okay so if I have four degrees open to the path i don't care if that guy with their strong grip open grip is starting you know 
five degrees right of the path. No matter what, no matter how I got there, no matter what I did, whatever, it is going there. Okay. So I come down like this, whoop, things going to the right. Um, you'll see. So I could do that with any grip. I could do it with a strong grip. I could do it with a weak grip. Okay. So I mentioned what my, my four are already an efficient pivot. Okay. Pivot is how we're moving. Okay. So do we pivot and move like this? Are we one of those people that goes here and then they got to swing down and go like this? Or do we pivot very strongly like this where we come in this side and have a nice, beautiful pivot. What does the pivot do when we move correctly with our body? We start to learn what it's like to follow. Everything follows the pivot. Now, I am not one that's ever gonna tell you like you hear on TV, oh, look at this, look at this player. He doesn't even use his hands anymore. Um, he, just, he just, all he does is he turns his body, his shoulders one way, turns another way, lets the club fall and that's it. And I, I, I laugh when I hear that because I'm like, huh, aren't his hands attached to the club? what's closing the club face, because if nothing else happens, this club face is already open. If you think about it to where the target is, isn't that wide open? I have to be like this, wouldn't I? If it wasn't, right? So we have to close this on the way down, folks. Okay, you have to. So anybody tells you your hands don't have to do anything? Impossible, you have to, okay? but. Our hands and arms are gonna follow, our pivot is what we want. The better we get, the more that will happen. We'll learn what it's like to make that happen, okay? So, we have, I believe and that efficient pivot is a fundamental. And, you know, we're teaching you so long and seeing it. You know, here's what I look for too, is that in everything when I make, make these decisions. I look at tour, I look at the good players on the tour. The, well, they're all good on tour. And I look for it, I say, are 100% of them doing this? And when I have the evidence that 100% of tour players are doing something, like, wow, there's no anomalies with it or nothing. So watch the way these guys move, how they all move great, okay? And the statistics prove exactly what they do. If you talk about just some features like this, about how they tilt down like this, you can go from this here to the pro up to about here with a 35 handicap and the handicap will rise exactly on a chart like this from the pro who gets their shoulder tilted nicely to the really high handicapper, the higher up they are with their shoulder here, the flatter they are, the higher the handicap goes up. So if I'm just a little bit above it, I'm probably gonna be there. It's a direct measure off of your handicap, okay? It'll go, it goes on the straight line up from the pro to the worst based on this and I can give you quite a few others that are like that exactly. Okay, so pivot low point. We've learned so much about low point lately. Um, I don't want this video to be an hour long to get into all of it, but low point learning to understand where the club is coming down at its lowest point. So if we have a regular seven iron like I have here, when I hit the ball like this. I'm not at my lowest point. I'm not like this here. I'm not going. Oop. Excuse me. Those are your toppers and people who catch it thin, fat, and all that. I'm like this, and I'm catching it probably in the third groove. And guess what? Turf is coming up, turf's coming up, and my lowest point's about right there, four inches in front about. Okay, now you're gonna have some that are more than that on the tour. Um, some are have a crazy bunch, but about four inches. What why do I get that? angle of attack, you know, it's coming down and it's also influenced by your path, right? Because if I have a club path coming away from the inside, look what's going to happen. It's going to be, want to be more back here and traveling more up at the ball versus people are like this. Look at that when it comes down up here, that's your circle of golf right here for your low point. So each video I'm going to do alone and get into each one really deep. Okay. Now we go into club path and face control. So basically the variance of the two, and that's the fundamental, the, vari have the difference between your face and your path. So if I have a club path that is, let's say 10 degrees 
inside, inside to out, okay? So here's my path. My, uh, 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 this is my, uh, I'm gonna show you my path right here. It's gonna be like, let's say 10 degrees inside out. We're going a lot, okay? So 10 is pretty much for somebody who comes severely. And this is gonna be a little probably exaggeration for you guys to see it, okay? And let's say my face, now the target line is this white one. Let's say my face angle comes down just like negative one degree, not much left of the target line, okay? So I have this path coming way out. So I swing on this path like this, coming way inside out, right? My face is along this one, okay? So when I tell you about the 85%, it's gonna start about one degree, right around there, 0.85, left of your target line. This is the dead, dead hook. And since I have a 10 inside out, look out. You have a crazy hook that's not gonna stop until it hits water or a tree, <laughs> probably. So how do you get that down so you don't bury it so much? If I bring this inside out down, I'm gonna stick with a negative one club face. I'm gonna go with a two on the path. So now I'm swinging just a little bit more out. Here, let's make this a little more. So it's just a little bit more, but I still have a kind of closed club face. It's still starting. Barely left of the target, but it doesn't curve as much. You, If you are aiming down the middle of the fairway with a hard five iron, you're, you could have gone onto the left side, barely into the rough if you hit it really far. If you don't, you wouldn't have seen that much variance, okay? Because it's not that big. So it's the difference between the two, okay? And finally, it's our club face, okay, is the factor uh, I want to talk about. So... This means, as I've already told you, is where the ball is gonna start. Right here, this club face is everything. What it's pointing at, okay? So, quick quick little tip for everyone that's playing golf. Worry about this club face, that's it, really. You're not practicing when you're playing golf, you are playing golf, right? So let's say you're hitting everything left that day, starts like goes left, open your club face up a little bit to start. Do whatever you can to get that club face up, open more coming through. So how would we get open more? Get those knuckles more up instead of coming down. Quick tip for you guys. But I want you worrying about this club face when you play. But the club face is our direction of the uh, start life of the ball. So that's why this is so important. This doesn't matter how I have my grip on there, okay? It doesn't matter at all. It's where it shows up. Now, depending on how your grip is, if you are a little weaker, the club face will kind of match the back of your hand and you can kind of imagine that as your control but if you go stronger it doesn't really match exactly anymore but you can think kind of the back of your left hand is the control here so if I'm controlling the club face look what I can do with this open closed open closed open closed so I have to close on the way down don't I to get to the position we all want right boom like that so those are my four fundamentals of golf okay anybody who can master those is going to be a great golfer now i my number one is getting the pivot and the body moving correctly ne number two we go to getting we, we go basically to low point so we start hitting that ball well okay i want you to at the very beginning or if you're struggling let's say hitting behind it flipping doing whatever you're doing I want, I want you to teach you to come through and hit that ball solidly with compression. Even if you are losing it 20 yards to the right or 20 yards left or 20 feet, let's say, at least every shot you're compressing because you're getting your hands ahead, you're doing it correctly. And then once you can do that, we'll work on path and face even more so you can get nail that down so it, you don't have that big dispersion. But we have to understand how to do that to get ahead so we fix those. So the problem with golf is what? People don't work on those. They look for these simple tips online, hoping that if I just do this one move, it's gonna fix everything. It won't if your pivot's not correct. It never will. If you have a pivot that turns, like goes like this, I don't care what you do to try to hold off this thing and say you're getting lagged, whatever you're gonna do, try to get it and go like that. What do you do? You can't hit the ball. You're gonna miss it. You're gonna to have to stay on your back foot and go like this to hit it. It's the only option you have if you're about 80% golfers that go way on your back foot and you're stuck here. Instead of learning to put pressure on your outside foot, then recenter 
back in here. So you're doing what? Recenter here. I'm back where I started. I've already started my hips going boom. Imagine the more powerful that is than just being stuck on this back foot going, I got 0.3 seconds to pick back to the ball. What do I do? Oh, I can't come a shaft length. I'll come right over it. Yeah, or I'll dig it right in the ground. So those are mine.